Hello chaps, welcome once again to John Robson Guitar Tuition. As always, I do hope you're well. Today's video is all about the five fundamental things that you really can't afford to not know about music uh, in general and the guitar in particular. I'm sure as this video progresses, uh, there are going to be some people uh, saying, yeah, but why is he talking about that? that? That's obvious, isn't it? You know, surely everybody knows that. And, well, in my experience as a guitar tutor, I've come across many, many very good players, uh, competent guitar players with great technique, people who are out there playing in uh, bands on the local pub and club circuit. But they often have um, gaps in their knowledge, and these gaps are quite often the root cause of, of any problem or hurdle that they're struggling to get past. Uh, it's why they end up coming to see someone like me, I guess. Um, I would guess the first and most important um, fundamental thing that you just absolutely have to know about music is the chromatic scale. Here's some information on that. Okay, this is the chromatic scale. And put simply, it's just the progression of notes that you get when you move up any string in one fret increments. So if we start on an A note, here it is, and move up one fret from that, we come to an A sharp, which is also known as B flat. After that, we go to a B note. After B, we go straight to C, no sharps or flats between B and C. After the C, we get a C sharp, which is also known as D flat, and then comes D. After D, we have a D sharp, also known as E flat, and that takes us onto the next note, which is E. After E, we go straight to F, once again, no sharp or flat between an E note and an F note. But after the F, we go to an F sharp, also known as a G flat. And then we end up on a G note, which is followed by a G sharp, also called A flat. And finally, we arrive back again at where we started on the note of A an octave higher this time. And that is how the chromatic scale maps itself out along the length of the neck of the guitar. Okay, so you can see how the chromatic scale is going to be uh, a massively important thing for figuring out what notes are where on the guitar, which in itself has many, many applications. But it also enables you to transpose a, a song from one key to another. Let's imagine you've learned a song from ultimateguitar.com and you've got it absolutely uh, blob on perfect. And then you get into the practice room with the band and the singer needs the, uh, the song in a different key. If you don't know how to transpose, then you're a fish out of water. And if you know the chromatic scale, then you do know how to transpose. You just move everything um, along that scale the same amount. Another thing which often trips people up is when there is talk of fourths and fifths and seconds and thirds and sixths and sevenths and stuff. Um, major scale intervals, basically. The major scale is the benchmark, really, against which all other musical entities are measured. Uh, so it, it really does appear to have a good understanding of what's going on in terms of the intervals in a major scale. So here's some info on that. Okay, here we go. The intervals of the major scale. Uh, beginning on any chosen root note, go up one tone from that, and that takes you to the second note of the scale. Go up another tone, that takes you to the third note of the scale. A semitone takes you to the fourth note of the scale, and another tone takes you to the fifth note of the scale. Go up another tone from that, that's taking us to the sixth note. Another tone from that takes us to the seventh note, and another semitone from that takes us to the root note again, an octave higher. So now you can fairly easily understand what is meant when people say a fifth or a sixth or whatever you now know how many semitones that refers to how many frets on the guitar basically so if we apply that to a few randomly chosen root notes let's start with c uh, going up those intervals from a c note gives us the notes of c d e f g a b and c 
go up the same set of intervals from an A note and we get the notes of A, B, C sharp, D, E, F sharp, G sharp and back to A again. And one more example, starting on an F note, we get the notes of F, G, A, B flat, C, D, E and back to F. So, you know, now you can quite happily converse with people when they say the fifth of F or the third of C or the sixth of A and so on and so on. You now know what all this means, which is going to be useful. So those are the intervals on, in a major scale. You now know, for example, that a third means that you've gone up four frets and a fifth means that you've gone up seven frets and so on and so on. Why is that useful? Well, uh, first of all, it's the beginnings of understanding harmony, okay, which includes how chords are made. So let's imagine you're in a situation where you have to play a chord that you don't know the shape of. And, you know, you may have uh, some kind of app that enables you to look it up or you can look on the internet, but isn't it much, much more reliable to be able to figure it out for yourself? If you know what intervals are in that chord, then you, and you know what those intervals are on the neck of the guitar because of your knowledge of the chromatic scale, then you can quite easily figure out how to play a chord that, you know, hitherto you, you didn't know the shape for. And there are a whole other load of reasons that I won't go into now because I don't want to go off on kind of all sorts of weird tangents. But trust me, if you understand the basic benchmark the major scale against which all other musical entities, scales, chords and everything are built, then you are going to be much less confused um, <laughs> and less often. So that's the major scale intervals. Now, another really, really important um, building block of music, if you like, is called the cycle of fourths, sometimes called the cycle of fifths, either, either name is um, fine. And, you know, many people are confused as to what it is and to how you'd use it. So, first of all, let's have a look at what it is. Okay, here's a C major scale. C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. As you can see, the fourth note of that scale, one, two, three, four, is an F. And if we now start a major scale on that F note, we get F, G, A, B flat, C, D, E, F. The fourth note of that scale, the B flat, we can begin a major scale on that. And the fourth note of that scale, which is the E flat, let's begin a major scale on that. The fourth note of that scale is an A flat. Let's begin a major scale on that. And the fourth note of the A flat major scale is D flat. So let's begin a major scale on that. The fourth note of a D flat major scale is a G flat, or in this case we're going to call it an F sharp. So let's begin a major scale on that. And the fourth note of a F sharp major scale is a B, so let's begin a major scale on the B note. The fourth note of the B major scale, which is E, uh, let's begin a major scale on that. And the fourth note of the E major scale, the A note, let's begin a major scale on that. And the fourth note of the A major scale, one, two, three, four, that's a D note. Let's begin a major scale on that one. The fourth note of the D major scale, one, two, three, four, is a G. So let's begin a major scale on the G note. And then if we take the fourth note of the G major scale, one, two, three, four, that's a C note. Uh, we're back to the C major scale again. Here it is. C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. And that is the cycle of fourths. So that's what the cycle of fourths is. Uh, fairly simple, really. Uh, what are its uses? Well, they are manyfold. 
uh, first of all many chord sequences are based upon movement around the cycle of fourths so going from a C to an F to a B flat and so on and so on like that um, you also uh, get to know what uh, chords are related to each other by being in the same key here's an example here's the cycle of fourths here and look at the C there okay well the two uh, notes either side of it you've got an F uh, on one side and a G on the other side those are the three major chords in the key of C and that's a trick that you can always use to figure out what chords are in a key what chords might be in that song that you're trying to figure out that's always a handy thing to know if you've got um, if you're trying to figure a song out by ear, knowing what chords are likely to come next because they're in the same key well now you've got a little bit of knowledge on um, how to figure that kind of thing out the cycle of fourths you will see as you investigate music theory further has many many uses and applications which I'm not going to go into right now as I say I don't want to go off on too many weird tangents um, into other topics but trust me it's going to be a, uh, a very useful thing for you to know which brings me on to the penultimate um, item on this list number four this is the whole concept of relative majors and minors now this is um, something that goes back hundreds if not thousands of years so we've got to do a little bit of history uh, to really understand this here's the information okay let's talk about ancient Greece for a moment specifically this chap here Pythagoras now as well as his work on trigonometry which I'm sure we all remember fondly or otherwise from our school days uh, he also made a lot of discoveries that are relevant to music um, specifically he discovered the fifth or the interval that we would these days refer to as the fifth uh, it was just to him a mathematical ratio between notes that uh, sounded pleasant together and he also discovered that you could stack fifths on top of each other uh, so you take a note and then you take the fifth of that note that gives you a new note uh, then you take the fifth of that new note and so on and so on and you can end up daisy chaining these together into a form of a note ladder and the Greek word for ladder is scala which is where we get the word scale from and if we take a look at our friend the cycle of fourths again if you go anti-clockwise around this you get the cycle of fifths and you can see that if we start on a C note and go to the fifth of C that takes us to G and if we go to the fifth of a G note that takes us to a D and the fifth of a D is A and the fifth of an A is E so that gives us the notes of C, D, E, G and A if we rearrange them in uh, ascending order that is a pentatonic scale much like this one I'm sure you all recognize this shape here this is what we would call a blue scale a pentatonic box a minor pentatonic a major pentatonic there are any number of ways of describing it and what we need to dig into now is why is this a minor pentatonic or a major pentatonic well let's have a look at the notes that are in it as we've already seen c d e g a or a c d e g if we take the a the c and the e notes out of that scale and look at them in isolation they give us an a minor chord if we take the C, the E and the G notes out of that scale and play those together, that gives us a C major chord. And you can look from now until the end of time to find any other major or minor chords lurking within that scale and you won't find any. There aren't enough notes to give us any kind of D major or minor chord. There aren't enough notes to give us an E major or minor or a G major or minor. The only two chords major or minor that can be derived from that scale are the A minor chord and the C major chord hence this little group of five notes here uh, A, C, D, E, G has a very strong affinity with an A minor chord and a C major chord because those are the only two chords that are in there 
Hence, we name this scale the A minor pentatonic or the C major pentatonic. And because pretty much all of modern music theory is derived from these Pythagorean origins, that means that that is a fundamental relationship that exists throughout music. C major is always partnered by its relative minor, A minor, and vice versa. Every major scale, pentatonic, every major chord, every major arpeggio, anything that you can put the word major next to always has a relative minor and it's always that relationship, the one that exists between C and A. So now you know all about relative majors and minors. And that's going to become very useful when looking into uh, playing lead guitar, figuring out what chords are in keys, etc, etc. It's just a good thing to know for many reasons. So there you go, that's what's going on with relative majors and minors. C major is equip the, basically the equivalent or the relative of A minor. D major is the same thing effectively as B minor. Uh, you can actually do this. Record a C major chord uh, just on you know in your DAW or, or Dacity or whatever. Record a, a C major chord and then over the top of it play an A minor chord and you will hear that it doesn't sound out of tune or horrible in any in, in the way that you would expect it to sound with two different chords going on at the same time. That is because of the very close relationship, the relative major and minor relationship that exists between those two chords. How is this of use to you in a practical sense? Well, remember when we were talking about the cycle of fourths and I said if you have the C, um, then you go either side of that, you've got a, an F on one side and a G on the other side, those are the three major chords in the key of C. Well, the key of C has minor chords in it as well, doesn't it? What are those minor chords? They are the relative minors of those three major chords. So alongside the C, you'd have an A minor, alongside the F, you'd have a D minor and alongside the G you'd have an E minor so that all of the chords, all of the commonly used chords, let's put it that way, in the key of C major are C, D minor, E minor, F, G and A minor. There's a diminished chord in there as well that uh, the more theory savvy of you will probably notice I've uh, glossed over but you know baby steps will come back to diminished chords maybe in another video. Uh, certainly you're going to be playing major and minor chords a, a lot more than diminished and stuff like that so that's why uh, we've concentrated on those there. So that's another uh, aspect of uh, the relative major minor thing that uh, you're going to find useful. Knowing which pentatonic um, scale is uh, applicable under any uh, given, you know, for any solo that you want to play. Um, Knowing that the C major pentatonic scale is the same thing as the A minor pentatonic scale means that you've now got two uses for that scale. You can play C major pentatonic licks over something in the key of C major or with the tonality of C major. You can also play C major pentatonic licks where the, um, the underlying pulse and heartbeat of the music the tonality, as we say, is A minor, okay, because it is the same thing, and just knowing that equivalence is, you know, a very, very useful thing, and it means that you basically, uh, once you've learned all of your pentatonic scales, you've got, each one is effectively two pentatonic scales, you, it can have two different applications, a major uh, tonality scale and a minor tonality scale. So those are the benefits of, or some of the benefits of, knowing your relative major and minor um, chords and scales and so on. The final thing on the list today we're going to look at is knowing basically uh, what notes are in any given chord. Um, this has many, many applications that we'll talk about after this short clip. Okay, as we saw in the previous clip, we now know that the notes in a C major chord are C, E and G. And the notes in an A minor chord are A, C and E. So if we can analyse what's going on here in these two chords, we can get some general rules that tell us what notes will be in any major or minor chord. So let's have a look at the C major chord first of all. 
these are the distances that exist between the C naught, the E naught, and the G naught. You can see that C to E is four semitones or frets, and E to G is three semitones or frets. This means that any major chord will have these intervals within it uh, a four semitone interval and a three semitone interval stacked on top of that. Minor chords, on the other hand, as you can see here uh, from the case of A minor, a minor chord has um, a three semitone interval that's there between the A note and the C note and a four semitone interval that we've already seen in the C major chord which is uh, from the C to the E. So therefore any minor chord will have a three semitone interval with a four semitone interval stacked on top of it. So we can confidently say that any major chord is a root note plus four semitones plus three semitones and any minor chord is the opposite way around. A root note plus three semitones plus four semitones. You now know what notes are in any major or minor chord. Simple. Okay, so knowing what notes are in chords, uh, why is this um, a, a good thing to know? Well, first of all, if you have a decent knowledge of the pentatonic scale, um, you know, the, the different patterns and so on, and if you can look at the chord sequence that you're playing that pentatonic scale over and be able to analyze that in terms of what notes are in the chords and throw those uh, chord notes into your pentatonic as well, you've ended up learning to play in modes without any effort whatsoever. This is what happened to me. I was reading um, in guitar magazines in the 80s all of this stuff about Mixolydian and this and Ioni and that and Aeoli and the other. Didn't have a clue what it meant. But when I finally did figure it out, I thought, well, it's, oh, it's just adding notes into a pentatonic. I've been doing that for ages anyway. Yeah, <laughs> clever me. Uh, there are many other applications for knowing what notes are in chords. We've just looked at major and minor chords here, but you'll find a PDF in the description box below that you can download, which describes what's going on in major sevenths and minor sevenths and a whole bunch of other chords, sus fours and sus twos and stuff like that. Um, so once again, if you come, ac come across a chord in a song that you don't know how to play, you've been told you need to play a B flat major 6 sharp 11 or something like that, then knowing how to uh, assemble the, the necessary intervals, going back to our uh, little uh, talk earlier about the major scale intervals, knowing how to assemble all those and being able to see where the notes are on the neck of the guitar, and just having a, a, a general un understanding of all of this in the round, then, you know, no chord is going to be a mystery to you anymore. It might take you five minutes or so to figure out the shape and practice changing into it and so on. But, you know, you're not going to be stranded without a, without a lifeline to, to kind of get you to the chord that you need. So there you go. Those are the five fundamental aspects of music that really you can't afford to do without. Um, Hopefully you found some of this at least informative, useful and maybe even a little bit inspiring. If that's the case then please hit the subscribe button and the notification bell and that way you won't miss any more of these videos. And while I'm here, just bear with me a sec, put the guitar down and I need to pick up this pedal. You stand a chance of winning this fabulous Line 6 M5 Stompbox Modeler. I did a video about this, um, I think last week sometime. Uh, basically, there's a prize draw going on. All you need to do to, to be in with a chance of winning this uh, pedal, and you can watch the, uh, the original video about this, the link is in the des description. All you need to do to be in, the ch in with a chance of winning this pedal, which was very kindly donated by a viewer to this channel, by the way. Thank you. You know who you are. All you've got to do is make a donation of £5 to Zoe's Place Baby Hospice. Now, Zoe's Place Baby Hospice is a charity in Middlesbrough which provides palliative, respite and end-of-life care to children under five with terminal illnesses. Um, and it is a massively, massively worthy cause and I'm hugely proud to be supporting them. Uh, so if you want to win this pedal, make a donation of a fiver, send uh, confirmation of that donation to the email address that you can see on screen here and at the end of the video and that way uh, you'll be in 
entered into the draw. Uh, basically, this is running until the end of December, so get your entries in before then. If you donate more than £5, I'd say you donate a tenner, you get entered twice. £15, you get entered three times, etc, etc. Um, just send me confirmation of the donation and uh, New Year's Day uh, next year, January the 1st, I'm going to um, do a little video, uh, if I've sobered up, <laughs> basically informing you who's won. And yeah, fantastic pedal as you will no doubt uh, conclude when you watch the video about it. And one for me, finally, if you would like some tailored one-to-one -one guitar tuition, then give me a shout via the details at the end of this video. If you live on Teesside in the northeast of England, you can come along for a face-to-face -face lesson. Or wherever you are in the world, you can have a lesson via Skype. And whichever way you do it, your first lesson is free. So you've got nothing to lose and everything to gain. And with that, I'll say thank you very much for watching. Thank you for your time. Uh, have a great day. And I look forward to seeing you all again next time around. Bye for now, folks.